Hey Poplars, we at Even Footing Games want to thank you so much for joining us for this short season of Even Footing Games Presents. And we want to let you know that we're going to be taking some time off for the month of December. We're going to spend some time with friends and family over the holidays. But keep an eye out on the 14th and 21st of December where we'll be airing two parts of a holiday special Christmas Yula Hana Kwanzaa extravaganza. We will be back in January with the fourth season of Even Footing Games Presents where we will be introducing both our new system, the potential system, and our new game that's currently in the works, Los Demonios City of Demons, hosted by our very own Jimmy St. James. We'll see you all in the new year. Fellow Seekers, welcome back to Beyond the Shadows. Our exploration has all come down to this moment. We stand inside a room in St. Gorgoths that bears the mysterious name of the Metaphysics Lab. There are Bunsen burners and Erlenmeyer flasks on granite tabletops and, and as I'm realising more and more, it looks for all the world like the biology lab at my old sick form. What is a high school science classroom doing in the middle of an abandoned mental hospital? Our BP box is going absolutely mad. But aside from the strange room, there doesn't seem to be any physical manifestations of the supernatural. The air, though, still feels charged. There's a tension in the air that goes beyond our bodily senses. Could it be the anticipation of the poor spirits who have been stuck in this place for all these years? The ritual talks about tearing down the veil, and I believe it's the veil between this world and the next. If we are able to complete the boutonning, will that allow these spirits who haunt these halls to move on? We're ready to find out. Charles, take a look at the book. You'll need to write out these shapes on the floor. Trusty Sharpie check. Hmm, there's a lot of weird squiggly circles, but should be simple enough. Oh, set up the recording equipment around the room, would you? This will sound amazing in stereo. It looks like we'll need both of us, Charles. I'll read the ritual words, and you'll tie the bootlaces together in double knots. Problem with that, we only have one boot. Have faith, Charles. The universe will provide. Now, put the boot in the centre of the larger circle that you've drawn, and ooh ooh, my word, feels like something just walked across my grave all of a sudden. Put the boot in the centre of the larger circle. Will begin. Oh, Walker, arise! Shake off the dust of aeons and shod thy ancient feet. We beseech thee to clump out the path before us with your unworldly steps, that we may walk in your footprints and find that which we seek. Oh, Walker, arise! Trod upon the pathways of the cosmos and kick over the walls that entrap us. Let us tread as you tread, through light and shadow with sure steps. O oh, walker, arise! Feet and toes and feet and toes and feet without end, arise! Helena, it's working. There's, there's another boot. Tie them together, Charles. Tie them now, and remember that the bunny goes around the tree! When we last left our poplars, we had reached a crossroads. We learned that the dull ones are trying to complete a ritual called the Bootening, which will summon Stubby Wubby and break down the veil between worlds, but Meta mentioned a counter-ritual called the Unlacening, which you all can do that will reinforce the barriers between. But... Both rituals can only be completed when the boots are next to each other, and they have to be completed. One, whichever one gets completed first will, will count out the other one. So there's like a time thing that we'll probably have to reenact in some sort of rolling dice mechanic to equal the passage of... As if we were taking chunks of actions and splitting them up into quantifiable dice-related actions. 
That's how these games work. Math rocks. Math rocks. <laughs> yeah, kids. Yeah, that's both a noun and a statement of truth. Yes, because math rocks. rocks. Heck yeah. 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 The room you are in, the metaphysics lab, has started to darken around the edges. The lights, the torch light, the old tiny gassy lamps that have been flickering and providing light are starting to flutter out. And in the doorway, you see two figures. They are bland. You can't make out their features. They are just the outlines of people in beige. It's it's like if you took a shadow and colored it the old tiny racist flesh tone color from the, the Crayola box. They're that sort of just generic tan. And they stand in the doorway, and you can see that... One of them has some sort of box in their hands that beeps with a red light. It blinks. Blink, 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 blink. Ooh, uh, the light. And the other is carrying the boot. Hey, that's the boot. That's the boot. They look around the room and they don't seem to notice you. They start putting little metal boxes all over the room. And they're talking to each other, but you can't. It's like they're talking to you through a tunnel that's being broadcast over a staticky radio station from an old-time radio. Which is, but they seem to be coordinating with, with each other. The one who had the BP Blinky Box puts it down, and she seems to have a book that you recognize as the book the librarian sent you into amazing form. And she starts, or it starts, motioning to spots on the floor for the other one to draw random pictures and triangles, and they're moving all about you. You can feel them moving in and out. Every once in a while, one of them will brush up close to you, and they'll start, sort of stop for a moment and if they've felt something, but they'll continue on around. They, they seem utterly unaware that anyone else is in the room with them. Meta has been watching them. He's pulled out his own book, the one that he's been, the script that he's been going back and forth on. Uh, and he goes, all right, this is the last thing I can do for you. He tears a couple pictures out of the book and holds them up for you. And it's a picture of some cir circular symbols. And in the middle of the two circular symbols are two boots that are tied together with very intricate, difficult knots. But the ends of the boot laces, of two of the boot laces, are, they have lines on them like they're being pulled free. So it's... Being un unlaced, untied. The unlacing. Uh, these, these intricate knots. He gives the he gives the paper to you, Leonard, since you're the one I happen to look at. And he says, This is as much as I have on the ritual. Good luck. I'm going to be standing over there in the corner, waiting to either congratulate you or run, deciding how this plays out. But again, I am here only for information that pertains to this moment and for nothing else. So you're on your own. Good luck, kiddos. And sure enough, he just goes and sits on a chair in the corner. And the light goes out of his eyes as if whoever was controlling him has moved on to something else. Whoa. Whoa! I, I took my meta magic and I put him back in the closet. Yeah. So, the, the dull ones seem to have already gotten started on their ritual. They, they seem to be looking at this book. They've set up these weird metal boxes all over the room. And they're moving. Time seems of the essence. And they don't notice us at all. They don't notice they, you guys at all. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they might... Sounds nothing. No, they might get a sense... Like I said, like, if they if they, one of them comes close to you, they'll, you know, like, you get a shiver. Sometimes, like, you get that feeling like someone walked on your grave. But they don't... They seem to look right through you or over you, as the case may be, since they're they're taller than you are. But yeah, they, they seem fully intent on what they're doing. And not even that they're unaware of their surroundings. They just don't... You're not... They're alone, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, guys, take a look at this picture. You see this? Very interesting. Yes. I see it. Okay. What's it got there? I think we got to make the symbols on the ground and get the boots in them. Mm, that makes sense. I'll take the paper and lay it down on the ground mm -hmm. and start. What is the ground in here? Is it stone? Is it tile? Is it? It's stone. It is just a pretty basic cement, old cement floor. Yep. There is a hole that seems to go down to the middle of nowhere, about a dime size that you caused a little while ago with your your super acid. But other than that, plenty of room for drawing a big old summoning circle. 
almost as if it was specifically created for this very purpose. What do we have that we can draw with? I could flap my wings, and we could draw in my dust. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm. Yeah. But All then, right. will they see us? Hmm. We have to do it really quick. Maybe. Okay. We can at least try. Give us the, give us the dust. You think yeah. you got enough right. dust? Oh, I can, if I'm mad enough and frustrated, I, I can make enough dust. All right. How mad and frustrated are you right now? Mad and frustrated. Or maybe scared. <laughs> maybe I'm more concerned See, about I, the situation. I don't know if concerned is going to be enough. You're right. Some, I think that I have to get mad. Okay. So what's going what's gonna to make you mad right now? Oh, what would make me really mad? If somebody made fun of me for my relationship with the goo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you remember that time? When I what? stood in my pot, but you had to I... talk and sweet talk to the goo. I don't want to talk about the goo. The, don't don't forget that like she tongue kissed the goo. Don't don't that's, listen. That's a very important part of it. Having it was... flashbacks to a previous game. <laughs> it was a very. <laughs> now you're laughing at me, and now I am getting really mad. It was a very special moment between me and the goo, and I didn't really think I would have feelings. Nighty night and goo, that goo moment. In a tree. You know what? You know what? When love just surprises mm-hmm. you, it, you you don't know what's going to happen. Love. And yeah. I'm. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm flapping really hard now. I'm flapping super hard. And I'm right. so frustrated. <laughs> Give me a beefy roll and add plus one to it because you're you're good work. All on. right, beefy. All right, you, you darn it! My rolls are so bad. I rolled a one. And I have a pick. Let me see my. Ugh. All right. I have an eight. It's not bad. It's it's good. I don't know why I'm yelling. Okay. All right. <laughs> hey, good job with an eight. Awesome. Uh, eight <laughs> is great. Eight is great. Hey, you fly, and are you are you trying to collect the dust, or are you just at this point where you're just rage flapping? I'm like, I'm, I'm rage flapping, mm-hmm. and my plan is to draw in my dust. Okay, so you're not going to draw with dust. You're going no, to... No, I'm just going to, like, draw the, in it. Okay, so the, the dust will become like a uh, like an etch-a-sketch almost, and you guys will trace. Yes, uh, exactly. Uh, okay, gotcha. Nighty Night has provided anger dust. Anger dust. Like most moth person related detritus it is vaguely radioactive and it gives you an unnatural fear of bridges in christmas time don't worry about that (laughs) more of that later but you do have a strange attraction to richard gear strange so but uh, but okay but okay don't he's not a bad looking guy so anyway 99 has given you a nice cloud of dust as the as the the moth dust falls the the heads of the dull ones do whip around, and one of them, the one who's been reading from the book, it seems like it's like it's sniffing the air, and then it sneezes and goes back to its work, but in the process of sneezing, it, ha- it has misscratched one of the spells that it's drawing on the floor, so it, 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 you can say go back and start to erase what it's done to fix it. So 99 has given you all a nice sp- space of, of moth dandruff. <laughs> to to draw in anger dandruff, anger dandruff. <laughs> it's like the worst college punk band ever. <laughs> oh, oh that's so good. Yeah. Are you anger still dating dandruff. that guy from anger, anger dandruff? dandruff? <laughs> <laughs> so hot. They open for Lifehouse. Okay, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna be big. Yeah. <laughs> so she's provided you with something to draw on this puddle on the floor. Harkle will outline a circle. You know, mm-hmm. a pretty good sized circle, and say, "Can't step within sight of that. Be careful, so we don't mess it up." Harko, okay. give me a crafty roll to, to to gauge your ability to draw a circle as a four year old. So four plus five is a nine. That's a good looking circle. Woo-woo! That's a pretty. That's a pretty pretty respectable circle. Like, ooh, Harkle knows his shapes. All right. There you go. Boom. Harkle, when you draw your circle, as you complete the circle, it, it there's like a, a little spark of light that, that seems to ignite and just, just ever so gently light up the ring the, the, that you've drawn into the, the moth. As, as if step one completed drawing a circle. I think we 
I suppose be doing this, guys. This being, it's it's an audio medium, Jim. So I need you to explain what Urkel is pointing at. We both be doing this. <laughs> this John is circle. Circle, that's it. That's it. Yeah, the circle. Yeah, I think we're supposed to be doing this. Yep, yep. Looks like that was correct. And there are there are also some symbols and stuff on the. Uh... Who can read those symbols? Okay. Anybody want to try? I don't know. Do we have to read uh, them, or do I just have to trace them? I, I mean, I could just draw them. You good a drawer. I'm all right. I'll try to draw them. I'm pretty good. I can be a good circle. Anyone who wants to try drawing them, sir, them, them symbols, why don't you give me one of them brainy rolls? This is like letters and math and stuff. I'm pretty smart. I'll try it. Yeah, I'll try it. Go on. Give me it. Let me hear it. Boom. Another nine. All right. How about you, Jay? Nothing but false. You said a crafty roll? I want a brainy roll. Oh, brainy roll. Show me your big brain, pots and pans, kid. Ooh, two plus three is five. Mm, That one looks a little off, the one that Jay drew, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Along with not too many of them. Can't really go back and erase because, you know, you're, you're writing in the dust. So it's sort of, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, and I'm certainly not marking anything down to come back later. Ooh, oh, ooh. It's kind of potato shaped. Most good things are. The dull ones have completed their circle, and they have put their boot into the middle of their circle. Do we have a boot, guys? Who's got the boot right now? I think Harkle does, right? Harkle, Harkle the boot seems to feel like it wants to jump out of your arms. I'll let it. I'll let it go. You're going to let it go? See, see what it does. I'm uh, into it. But that's bad. Isn't it going to find the other boot? Isn't that where it wants to go? Harkle, I, the, boot, the, the boot starts, hits the ground. It starts to hop right past your circle and towards the other circle. <gasps> stop it! Can't unlace them if they're never laced up. Jay, you're trying mm. to stop it? I don't know. I feel like we should. I, I do as well. <laughs> I, I need nimble rolls and I need people if people are diving for that boot. Catch the catch that b- b- boot! I'm diving for the boot. Catch that boot! Five and five is ten. Alright, nimble. Let's see here. Ten plus one eleven. Ooh. Dad, blame that's a couple quick Two minutes. superstar, like out of nowhere, the two wing kids get a burst of flight there. And the two of you manage to leap across the room and grab the boot. Between the two of you, the boot ain't going nowhere. And even though you feel it pulling towards the other boot, you also feel a tug from the circle that you drew. As if there's magnetic attraction and the boot is stuck in the middle. Like there's a pull coming from the other boot and there's a pull coming from your circle. And the boot you're holding is kind of caught in the middle right now. This is, it could be worse. It's not so bad. That's a good thing. Yeah, we want it to stay in our circle, right? Or at least be stuck in the middle. I mean, you haven't, you haven't put it in your circle yet, but yes, it's, it's, it's being pulled. It's like you caught it halfway between your circle and the other. Oh, circle. so we need to move it over to our circle. Push it that way. Push it that way. Because you two have such a good grab on that boot between the two of you, you do manage to get it into the circle. And the second that you put the boot into the circle, there is a. And the boot kind of yanks out of your your hands and plops itself into the middle of the circle. See, that's what I was hoping would happen. The room starts to swirl. Whoa, are you guys seeing this? As if you're standing in the middle of a merry-go-round and everything is zipping around (laughs) around you. I'm going to need some nopes rolls because the world's not supposed to move like this. But maybe it's a positive magical thing. Six. So we got noped out the last you got, time. Yeah, who, who got noped out? 99 and I. 99 and yeah. I. So does it reset or do we need to re-roll? You all started at eight, right? Yes. Yes. Your new max is now seven. Okay. Okay. Every time I you a one. every time you don't talk, you're good then. No, two d six. Remember, you can't roll a one with two. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure you can't do that. She's oh, good at math. You can. <laughs> okay. Standard d six. Oh no no. Oh no no. I got a six. 
Okay, then you're both okay. Everyone, everyone roll under their notes. I got a six. Yeah. Yeah, I rolled a seven. Okay. You all grab hands and and kind of instinctually close your eyes, and that seems to help the spinning a little bit because you're able to center yourselves. And as quickly as it started, the room stops spinning. And the two circles where each of the boots was, your circle and the dull one's circle, they've somehow merged into a single circle. And the boots are next to each other. And the dull ones, one of them is reading from their book, and the other one is oh, is hovering over the circle and is beginning to tie intricate knots to lace the boots together. Wait, wait, our our picture has knots too, right? But your picture seems as, seemed as if they were untying the knots, yeah. Yeah, yeah we have to untie them. Um. Oh, who, who wants to go untie them? One, two, three, not it. Nope, nope. Finger on nose. <laughs> What's that mean? Why you point at nah, your face like nah. that? It means I'm not it. <laughs> means not doing it. There is a flash of light. One of the boots seems to get a little bigger, as if it's growing to the size of a large foot that perhaps it needs to go <gasps> into it. Oh. Mm. And... All around you, the room that you're in, all of the sudden, is made of blocks. Square, pixelated blocks. Like those little blocks they were putting around, the doll ones. And you yourselves seem to be made of pixelated blocks. Uh Uh-oh. But then you flash back to your regular self, and the room flashes back regular. But as they continue to tie the knots in the laces... You flash back and forth between your regular selves and this blocky self quicker and quicker. As if as if another reality is starting to establish itself and the boot continues to get bigger. Guys, I think we're seeing through the simulation. I'm freaking out. <laughs> it's all a simulation, man! This remind me of time I drank that tea. <laughs> <laughs> that Harkwell or Jimmy talking? Yes. Hey, Leonard, do you think you could hop over there if we kind of create a distraction? Distractions are good. Yeah. Well, I think Leonard was thinking, it, so they're, the one of the dull ones is still tying the shoelaces. Yeah, one of them is tying. The other is, 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 is reading from the book and kind of walking around. Every now and then they will poke at one of their little metal boxes that they placed all over the floor, as if they're checking it for whatever they're checking their little metal boxes for. The room flashes again, and this time... You seem to be in like a medieval tavern that's just full of very ridiculously attractive elves and dwarves and people and everyone is very clever and pithy talking about adventures that they've gone on. They all seem to be very much in a specific and particular mold that they're unable to break out of. You all kind of see yourselves all of a sudden also fit into these archetypical molds, and then you flash back to yourselves. And, and, and every time it seems that a knot is tied, you've, you're phasing into a different reality. You know, there, there, there's, a, there's a melding somehow. So these knots more and more are tying the universes together. And the boot's getting bigger. It seems to be causing the rip in the time, space, and stuff. Continue, you, you know what I mean. It's science stuff. Oh, no, not the time-space continuity stuff. Yeah, so you guys do the distraction thing, and I'm going to untie it. Well, unlacing. What's a distraction? What's that going to look like? So far, they, they haven't even acknowledged that there's anyone else in the room. Yeah, I think Leonard's thinking of getting one of the dull ones off of the shoelaces quickly, so he takes a lot of the goop from his conjunctivitis eyes and kind of wads it up into a ball Mm -hmm. and just throws it at that person, tries to hit him in the, at the dull one in the face. Make, make an adventurousness attack. That was disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, My adventurousness is a two, but I rolled a five. So seven. Not too bad. You (laughs) throw, you throw your eye gunk. Mm. Like, like you do, mm-hmm. and as it flies through the air, you can see, you can see the the speed lines coming off of it. You know, as it ships through the air, 
But when it gets about maybe half a foot away from the dull one, it just <sighs> dissipates as if it hit a barrier surrounding them. But they do look up for a moment. When they look up for a moment, that's when I'm getting at the, those laces. You go for the laces. Harkle, how are you going to tie these laces, man? Do you know how to tie your shoes? No, but I think I can untie them. All righty. Harkle, I'm going to need a shot. I'm going to need a brainy roll from you then. You got it. This is a 10. Five and a five is 10. You snag a claw under what looks like a loose and just pop one of the, the laces free. Pop one of the knots free. And the dull ones visibly like bounce back. They're both pointing towards the shoes. They seem they're mumbling and they're they're far away. <laughs> they seem utterly shocked and surprised by the boot untying itself. They still don't seem to see you. They don't seem you know they don't see your hands. They don't see. Them, but the effect that you had on the boots is is visible to them. The unlacing. And now they jump back and and start to to retie in earnest. Quick, do something. I feel like. I remember that I'm crafty. <laughs> okay. I think you have art you have arts and crafts snack, if I recall. I correctly. do. Yes, you do. And I believe that because of that, I would always carry a scissors. It is not a great scissors. It is a kindergarten grade mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hardly gonna cut paper scissors. But maybe. Maybe I can do something with it. I don't know, man. Scissors all of a sudden out of nowhere. They're my, my craft. They're my craft bag. I mean, all of a sudden you got these magic scissors that you found. Why don't you give me a nosy roll? Four. You're looking around in your bag to see if you've got anything useful. All you can find is a little pair of nail scissors, like the ones that you just kind of use the very edges. Okay. Of to see, sort of- I knew that there was something in there like that, but guys. Now that you're, you know, a mature woman, you have to, you know, your appearance is very important. So, yeah. Yes. Guys, I'm really sorry. I thought that I had, like, school grade scissors, but I don't. I'm sorry. Let me see what I got here. I open up my lab coat, and you can see that there's, like, pockets on the inside. Mm-hmm. And I just mm-hmm. reach into one that seems to be full of something, and I, like, look shocked. Ugh. And pull some gooey mess out of it. <laughs> just some nasty, terrible thing. All right. Yeah. So, if, if alive. Oh no, no, it's not. It's not alive. And oh. I'll whip it. Yep. At the the guy trying to tie the laces. Okay. The the fuzzy one. So that is it's alive. Yep. Oh, nope, I was wrong. Sorry. Two cookies. I'll take two grumps. Okay. Me to seven, and I have to make a successful attack but with my old bacon strips dental floss concoction. So I'm going to use my uh, guile. Okay. I like that. Go for it. It's like a sneak attack. Like a sneak attack. Coming from beyond the shadows. Which will give me a 10. You son of a gunskies. The gloop flies out of nowhere as far as they can see. And it splatters across the chest of the one who's doing the reading. And he falls back on, on his back. And he just starts, you can see him clawing at where you would imagine his chest would be if, if he wasn't just a formless, faceless, you know, tan blob. And you think you hear the word ectoplasm, whatever that means, coming from the the being. And in the process of, of trying to walk, get his gunk off, he accidentally kicks over one of the metal things that they were sitting around the room. And there's a loud... Staticky sound from the from the thing, and they run back over and hastily try to set it back up. But they have stepped away from the boot as well, and they're fussing over whatever this metal thing that this contraption that he kicked over that made the, the horrible staticky sound. Someone unlacening. Yes. So can we run over there while they're distracted? Yeah, that would be a good sword? thing to do. Yeah. All right. I'll try it. Give me another roll. Give me a brainy roll. Brainy roll. Or how, whatever you want to unlace with. How are, we getting, are you going to try to be smart about it? Are you going to try to grab an end and yank and hope I'm for the best? I'm just going to grab an end and yank. I'm All right, give me muscly roll it. then. Okay, yeah, or, muscly, yep. yeah. Muscly. Seven. Oh, snap. You managed to yank another knot undone. The world flashes, uh, and this time you are surrounded by weirdly pale, tall people in clo- cloaks with long hair. 
Their mouths all seem too full of teeth, but not like in a scary, chompy way, more in a you put something dumb inside your face and you're trying to talk and they just all you can leave and stuff. And they, they keep calling each other Sarah and talking that, you know, you've you've wronged my my clan and now you're cursed and whatever it is. It seems like a pretty lame world that you want to don't really want to have anything to do with. And they don't look pale because it's cool. It looks pale more like because they haven't been out of a basement in a while. And the world flashes back to your world. The jumping of time is still happening or the jumping of universes, but you have snapped another another string. The laces are not undone, but there only seems to be one knot left. But the one who's been tying the knots is going back to it. He, he s- seems to scratch his head at the fact that the knots keep coming undone. But they don't seem to notice on their side that the boot continues to get bigger. We got to go for that knot. Come on, guys. Somebody do something. Do you want to give it a shot, Leonard? Yeah, I'll go for the knot. And then I'll add my presidential fitness challenge. (laughs) Yeah! My adventurousness. I need all the help I could get. Roll to six plus two plus one, nine. Nice. Leonard, you dive for the last knot with your powerful haunches. The, the knot is so tight, but you whip out your, your PI magnifying lens and you're able to to get a better look at the knot, even through your conjunctivitis eye. Between your conjunctivitis eye and your powerful haunches. <laughs> quite <laughs> your the, dream boat. Quite the catch that Leonard is. Mm-hmm. Quite the catch. Woo! Oh, calm me down. <laughs> oh, Mr. Beauregard, the vipers. <laughs> You're able to see the knot and untie that last knot. And as you do, there is a flash of energy from the boots and a pulsing. And for a moment, you see all of the worlds. The weird, sad vampire world. The weird, blocky, crafty, miney world. Crisp Pine playing a bard world. Super Mario with no butt world you know just all of the terrible worlds that could have crashed into your world share becomes the president yes that one too oh my gosh what are we gonna do if that happens luckily nothing the room settles and for a moment you are face to face with two ordinary looking grown-ups what one of them has a little beepy metal box in one hand and is holding you don't know what a microphone is, but if you knew, that's what you would re- you'd recognize. That's what it was. And they look down at you confusedly as if they, 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 A, don't know where they are, and B, aren't sure where these children came from. The second one is a woman. She's dressed all in shawls, and she's covered in dog hair. And she smells like chamomile tea. And she reaches out towards you, and you can hear her say, This is what's beyond? Children? When you untie the lath of the air. They disappear as your reality resets itself. What just happened? Are the people there or the dull ones or anything? They're gone. The dull ones are gone. Like they were never there. All of their stuff, all of their equipment that they've had left around, it's gone. All that's left is the two boots. That I thought that. Yeah. How, are the are the boots far apart I from each other? I think we or did are they, it. Or is it if we're okay? I the think boots we're okay. Seem to be just boots. No chocolate. Oh, well, no chocolate. Sorry. Hey there, butlers. It's Jason from Even Footing Games. They asked me to do a spooky ad about Anchor FM, and the spookiest thing I can think of is not knowing what Anchor FM is. If you haven't heard of Anchor by Spotify by now, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. And it's got everything you need all in one place. Anchor's got tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And when you host on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any of your favorite podcasting apps. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place and best of all it is free so go to anchor.fm or download the anchor app today to get started boo (laughs) 
Something is untying the boots! What? The boots are untying! Something is untying the laces! Something is, is fighting us! Every time I tie a knot, it comes undone a moment later! It, it must be the entities who have trapped the innocent spirits in this place! Tie faster, Charles! Just a few more moments and the ritual will be complete! Oh, Walker, arise and traipse down the corridors of time and... Oh, gross. What in the hell is this? Oh, God, it smells like the wrong end of a sausage curry. That was incredible. It just came out of nowhere and completely covered you. It must be ectoplasm. Make sure you save it later for testing. I'll save some of it, all right. It's never coming out of this sweater. Simply amazing. Actual ectoplasm. Damn, the boots. I've lost track and they've... Oh no, they've come undone. I'm sorry, Helena. I got distracted and just couldn't tie them quickly enough. Charles, I don't think it matters. Look, look. Do you see them? My God, I do. Four of them. They're so small and hideous. Look at all those tongues. Hush. They're children. And they're beautiful. Hello, little ones. You're all absolutely glorious. Thank you for tonight. Thank you so, so much. Where, where's my phone? Where's the bloody camera on this bloody phone? How in the hell did I take a screenshot? Okay, okay, not flash on. Aiming and... No! Where did they go? They just... They just disappeared. The veil went back up and our worlds are separated again. And I... Think... Whatever was here, whatever spirits we touched... They're quiet too. There's... There's nothing on the EMF reader. The boot's gone. And everything else in the room... The, the whole lab is gone. It, it all seems so much older, fallen down. As if it's a different building altogether. As if we have gone someplace else. And now we're back. We did go someplace else, Charles. And it was wonderful. Yeah. It was. Come on. Help me gather up all the equipment. I need to see how much we were able to record and... I don't know. I have to process this all. Goodbye, little ones. Safe travels. Wherever you go. I still feel like we should destroy the boots just to be safe. I want to put the boots on. That feels bad. But I'm yeah. curious. Hercule, my... you should do it. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. Put, yeah. Put the boots put on. on. Yep. Put them on. Put them on. Put them on. I got two tails. Why wouldn't I put the boots right. on? Right. In the name of science. <laughs> Arkle, you put Thiath. your feet into these boots, and there's a voice that seems to be coming from your toes. It says, "No, friend. You'd like to All take right. a walk with me?" Yeah. No. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Shh. All you need to do is take the first step. Take a step. As Harkle steps, there's another flash of lights, and you all hear what sounds like paper tearing. Like, ever so, so quietly. And then the next step. Do you want to go on a walk with me, friend? Okay. No. <laughs> take the next step. Harkle, you see where your friends are standing. They change into different people. They're all still the same people, but they look different. Nighty Knight goes from being a cute, adorable, now middle-aged moth woman to she's seven feet tall and her eyes glow bright red. And she's she's a, a creature of nightmare. Mm. Leonard looks like a felt puppet on the hands of an aging hippie. They flash through so many permutations. Yes, if you walk with me, little friend, we can see all, all of the universes at once. Just take another step. Just a second. I'll take one step backwards, being careful to put my foot back where it was and see what happens. 
That's the sound of paper being untorn. Untorn. No. Walk forward, and I shall show you all of the things the universes have. We shall see Take all of the sights. Another step backwards. Walk no further backwards, young friend. You don't understand what will happen if you go too far back. I look behind me to where before the boots were on, and I'll take one step backwards to before that, with the boot on. The boots. The boots on. All of a sudden, you feel like you've slammed into a, you've walked into a a wall. Like you've backed into, to the most immovable object ever. And the voice is, no, no, you've gone too far back. Now the worlds will never be, they will never, never be made one. You've put up a wall. Between all universes. Don't don't you see what you've done, little friend? Stubby Wubby is now trapped in your universe. You've trapped me here with you. Get out of my shoes. And you are thrown out of the boots. Oh. <laughs> well, with fun while it lasted. And Jimmy, the one of the boots, you all see one of the boots explode in just a torrent of, of leather and rubber. And in the middle of the room is a giant foot. It's about the size of a compact car. And on the ends of its toes are tinier feet. And on the ends of its toes are tinier feet. And on the ends of its toes are tinier feet. And in the corner you hear Meta say, No! I didn't account for this! How are we going to get out of this mess now? Is that a nopes roll? Dude, that's, yes, that's a nopes roll for everybody. Oh. 11. That's not good. That's not good. That's no. not good. This oh. is, it's two dice, right? High rolls are bad when for nopes, yeah. So Six. what's your nopes at? Eight. Eight, so. Eight. So Jim, your so nopes I mean, goes down to three since you rolled an 11. However, I am a baby of science. Yes. I will eat two cookies, and I don't believe in this stuff, so when forced to make an oops roll, the reanimator can fall back on their trust in science and cookies and take only one note. Okay. Oh, I'm seven. Rather than much more. I think, Ashley, you rolled uh, an eight. Eight. Out of cookies. You're down to six, then? Mm. What did you do? Oh, no, I'm not. I rolled a ten. Oh. I your note set. I was at seven, so I got now to go down you to four. Got four. How about you? I got six, so I'm good. You're okay. Jay had his eyes closed. You <laughs> you hear a pop, and where Meta was standing is just a the outline, a dust outline of where a Wizard used to be before he noped out of this plane of existence. So you're on your own, kids. There is a giant evil foot <laughs> clomping around. Inside the metaphysics lab with you, and a voice saying, "Holy cow!" Yeah, you can't understand what the voice is saying. It's oh. I don't know how it's talking, but it's really weird. Meow. It's it's not even talking. It's just the sound of its toe feet scraping together on it. Yeah, it's not a good looking foot either. I mean, it's calloused, and there's some corns and. The, the, it, it, would, it would probably have some serious toe jam if it had toes that weren't more feet. What if we just run away and close the door? <laughs> that that sounds good. Yes, I would also like to try that. All right. Give me nipple rolls to get around the giant foot that's taking up most of the free space in the room at this point. I, I think that's a brilliant idea. Just close the door and pretend this never happened. Because I don't think we can beat it. I don't know. I agree. Five. Leaving. Oh gosh. Five and five is ten. Four. Three. Nine. Okay. Steve, are you making a run for it? Yeah, I made a four. I rolled. Yeah. Oh, gosh. You and I are stuck. Nighty but... night. Jay, you get out. You're gone. Boom. Out of the room. Bye. <laughs> you turn around to see <laughs> Harkle trapped under a toe and and Leonard... Trying to climb his way over the arch of the foot. But you two are out but of the there room. there he finds even more feet. And it's oh. even more feet. Yep. You two are gone. You made it. The two of you failed your nimble rolls. The foot smell Ew. is 
rough, especially when you're up close to it. So I'm going to have you take what what sort of damage would you like to manifest this as? Ouchies. Ouchies. How about you? It is a smell that is emotionally, <clears throat> mentally, and physically damaging. Yeah, uh, tell me uh, this. Emotional man. smell. You're going to take six of whatever you chose. Oh. oh critical mass. Critical oh. mass. Leonard's out then. I'm the Leonard. Leonard just kind of. The poor amphibian. He just kind of slithers off the foot. Harkle, are you still on? Are you still up? Yeah. My gosh. <laughs> I'm going to. How about you two? You doing anything or are you just standing on the door watching? Or are you even there uh, anymore? I, did you just did you eat, did you just run and not look? Not I think watching? I kept <laughs> going. I just kept going. We were really hoping they're right behind us. I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> Both of you give me nosy rules. Nosy, you got it. Not you. You're you're. I got problems for you. Oh, uh, those. J J and those J and Nighty Night. Yeah, yeah. Eight. It's not this. Both of you. Not we're bad enough. Eight. Yeah, you just keep on running. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You didn't hear nothing. I'm out for five minutes. Yeah, right? go get get Scooch. I'll save you. Maybe. You tried on those shoes. You got us into this mess. I'd do it again. <laughs> yeah, I, the curiosity was too much. I knew it wasn't going to be good, but I had to know. Jim, give me a nosy roll. Nosy roll? Mm-hmm. Uh, haven't used my big eyes today, so I'll do that. Oh, that's going to be huge. That's going to be an 11 with big eyes. You're trapped. Kind of underneath and between the toe feet of Stubby Wubby. And you can't help but notice there is a, I mean, of course you can't help but notice you're half covered in it. A cheesy, meaty, kind of cruddy, slimy gunk between these toes. Mmm. I could use some of that. As a rehaminator, <laughs> you feel some sort of connection. <laughs> A compulsion, if you will. <laughs> a compulsion, if you will. To collect and bring some of this to life. Mm. Here's what I'd I'm like you to, to do. Okay. All right. You've lost right. Bob. Bob's gone. Bob's yeah, gone. Can I, like, mold this into... I'm going to let you try to make a new abomination. Oh. A, to, re to rebobinate. I'm going to rebobinate. I need a brainy roll, but I'm going to re a good brainy roll. So, any cookies you got? Any items you haven't used yet? Yep. Any any tricks you can pull out of your sleeve? In the meantime, the two of you give me give me a, another nosy roll. Two of you who are running. He really wants us to get in trouble, doesn't he? I I don't want to get in trouble. I want to keep going. I got oh no, I got a four. How about you, Carrie? Four plus three is seven. Carrie, you're still going. Jay continues to run. Nighty night, you realize there's no one behind you. Oh. It's up to you. Uh, what you want to do with that knowledge, but they're not following. Yeah. Keep I running. Feel like I, I feel like I've gotten this far. Okay. Um, you can keep running if you want. Yep. I'm going to keep running. Okay. Nighty night has now officially abandoned her friends. All right. I'm sorry. It had to be done. There was no saving them, and I know that they would want us to go on. No, I would want you to come back and save me. They would. They no. They would want this. <laughs> this is a a voluntary failed nopes. Nope. <laughs> Run and okay, hide. So, so for my brainy, I do have a I do have a knack. I'm gonna okay. invoke one smart cookie. Okay. Eat that cookie. Yep. That's gonna make it an eleven all day. A five plus five plus one. Okay. I'm hot tonight. You are hot tonight. Hot. Hot. Hot fire. How does how does Harkle reanimate his his meat? Well, he gets into his pockets and mm -hmm. he pulls out some of that legendary goo that he has. Sure. And he's going to use it as a catalyst because it's already imbued with some of the essence that Bob was imbued with. I mm -hmm. saved some back because I knew this day might sure, come. Sure, absolutely. So I'm just going to slather that in there and get a nice foam going. Oh, ooh, okay. Yeah, a nice that way you can foamy meat concoction. Froth it, yeah, and that way I can shape the foam mm -hmm, mm -hmm. into the form of a. The problem with Bob's, he had no shape, right? But oh. I realized the error of my ways. Try to make it into the shape of a uh, four-legged animal of some sort, dog, okay. cat. Yeah. So once you have 
shaped the meat foam into an animal, a four-legged animal shape. Meat foam. Meat foam. Oh, God. <laughs> and you've, you've imbued it with the spark of life, I guess, if that's what we're calling it. Um, that's alive! You've come too, Leonard. That's alive! Standing, <laughs> you see Harkle's arms just reaching out from between these toes, because he's still under the toes, and there is some sort of horrific toe jam cocker spaniel thing, like, standing on top of the foot looking down at him, and it's just going, bruh, bruh. It appears to be made of meat foam. What does the, what does the meat foam smell like? Baloney! <laughs> That's well, nice it's made from it. the toe jam of an elder god, so I mean, really, okay. and, you've got options. And the hmm. the the jelly between and, the Vienna sausages, and the and the jelly between the Vienna sausages, oh. which is really where where the magic hmm. happens. Somewhere between, it's been, imbu- been imbued with Harkle's essence as well. Whatever yes, that, means. yes. So Snally Gaster essence as well. So think dumpster behind a Denny's in Arizona. Okay. With a little bit of seventh grade boys locker room tossed oh. in. Mm. And let's say just a hint of Capricola. And it's musky. <laughs> it's just looking at Argo going Sergeant. Oh, yeah, come here, boy. And I'll like nuzzle up to it with my nine no. toes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Leonard, <laughs> Leonard, give me a muscly roll as the foot starts to move around as if it's looking to start kicking. You are on top of it at this point. Yeah. Three. You get kicked right off. You fly through the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> With your arms flailing like some sort of D- foam, foam <laughs> puppet flailing through the air. Does he croak as he's flying? He's he croaks. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a nimble roll to see how, if you can salvage the landing. Can I? Um. When he makes that nimble roll, but mm-hmm. who is the real monster? The yeah. Who is following? the real monster? I, I do have the my abomination back. So you do. I'm going to tell Fred. That's his name now. Okay. Uh, he's in a Fred nation. He's a Fred nation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and f- a Fred nation. Go. Go help. Boy, go help. So when he comes down, you will get plus one to your nimble because all you really want to do is get the heck away from that nasty thing. All right. I, I'm, I'm all right with that. So as you fly through the air, Leonard, what do you get? I think I may do my perk two of a four roll. <laughs> it's a now's nimble, the, right? Now's the time to use it. Yeah, yep. I think now's the time. <laughs> so plus three total. Two. Yeah, plus three total. Two plus two is four plus three is seven. Needed it. As you fly through the air, the ground rushing at you, Leonard, you think, oh no, this is it. Uh, Like a frog crossing the road, just splatted on the cement. No, here comes Fred, running from across the room. He dives underneath and catches you on top of him, and for a moment you are riding the foamy ham monster. Hang on for eight seconds, cowboy. (laughs) It's slickery. (laughs) Oh man, he's... There's no good way to hold on to it, but he breaks your fall and comes to a stop as you slide off of Fred's back. Does, uh, does a little bit of Fred get all over him? A little bit of Fred's all over him. Yep. yep. Thank uh, you, boy. The foot is getting bigger and bigger all this time to the point where it's it's just about to fill up the entire room. It's The, the top of the foot is touching the ceiling. There are the time to go, Leonard. Now the time. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time. Give me some nimble rolls if you want to try to run out. How do you guys want to try to escape? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to hide and try to be kind of be smart about it so I can use, can okay. I use my guile. Yeah, yeah. You can guile your way out of this one. Nine. <laughs> I should probably, Leonard's probably going to do the same. Be smart about try, it. Look for, look for some openings. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look for openings. Yeah, I get a nine. Mm-hmm. All Not right. a great roll, but with that guile. This is a guile roll? Is good. Yeah, yeah. We'll call this a guile roll. Eight. Okay. You're covered in gooey, toe jammy, elder god crud, both of you. And apparently the foot is unable to sense what doesn't belong to it. And it doesn't make any any movements as you sort of sidle around it. 
you you sort of predated it by covering yourself in mud and made yourself and it's, invisible and it's, to its heat. It's, it's uh, own essence. It's heat vision. Yeah, yeah. And you managed to sidle out of the metaphysics room. The foot is taking up the entire room at this point. And some of the, the toes on the ends of feet, on the ends of toes, on the ends of feet, on the ends of toes, are are, ha- are starting to work their way into the hallway. And the, the room is... St- <laughs> you can f- The foundations of the room are starting to crumble as the foot gets bigger and bigger. On the ends of toes, on the ends of feet, on the ends of toes, on the ends of feet. It's toes and feet all the way down. And as it gets bigger, it grows more toes on the ends of its feet, on the ends of its toes, on the ends of its feet. Just making haste, trying to catch up to the cowards that got away. Yeah. You two just keep on running. <laughs> and eventually you catch up to the other two. Jay just realizing, oh, you guys weren't here all along. Oh, hey. And Nighty Night pretending she also didn't realize you weren't behind all along. Oh, my gosh, guys. I had no idea. You've been here the whole time, right? I imagine there's a smell associated with us at this point. There's moment. quite an odor coming from you. Wait, and what's that ploppy thing? The f- Fred. Oh, hi, Fred. Oh, yeah, can I pet boy. him? He already they one life today. <laughs> Tastes pretty good too. That's okay. Ew. Good boy, Fred. There's the sound of yeah, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> It's the sound of, oh, I don't know, a giant foot growing bigger than the rooms that it's in. The toes on feet on toes on feet are rushing down the hallway at you like like a flood. It's just a flood of feet and toes and feet and toes and feet and toes and feet and toes. And you hear the crack of the the roof as the top of the foot busts its way out of the top of the school. The foot is now about 30 feet high and probably about 70 feet long. And it's just getting bigger and bigger. And now all of the students and the teachers are starting to pour out. They've they've all noticed the noise. Oh, oh, there's a giant foot. Oh, oh, what a terrible thing has happened. What are we going to do? Who caused this giant foot? Oh, oh, all the teachers. Oh, no, it's finally happened. It's the end of everything. So do we know how we can contain or kill the foot? Man, I don't think you can kill it, but maybe you can contain it. I don't know. Have you have you have you may have you met anybody who might be able to help? Have you found any items? I mean, what do you got? Do you have any genius ideas that I'll go along with? Because I think it's cool. What do feet hate? Bats. Right. You know what? Man, these are these are pretty nasty feet. I don't think. Okay. This, I don't think this is real. It can't be real, right? Because if that thing just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing, then it'll just take up everything. That's just not real. I'm Wait. gonna close my eyes. <laughs> oh no! Wait. Oh no! It's not real. Harkle is <laughs> not real. Harkle, <laughs> Harkle, oh, oh, no. it's okay. <laughs> nope, he has noped himself out. Uh, Harkle's no, brain has broken. It was bound to happen. What if we lead the foot to where the goo was outside the gym? Do you think it could get stuck? Oh, man, at this point, oh. the, the foot could explode out of the gym. But hey, why not? Oh, well. Anybody else <laughs> you got try any to ideas? <laughs> All I could think of that a foot hates is like gold bond, and I thought that maybe we could go to the nurse's office and find a bottle of gold bond. <laughs> Get some powder. <laughs> Wait. What if the, your moth dust is like powder? The roof of that entire wing is just foot now. Oh. Uh, Madame Bravatsky, Bratvatsky's museum is gone. The library is gone. The, the metaphysics lab is definitely gone. It's pandemonium. The teachers are like throwing <gasps> spells at it, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. It's like nothing is what can stop the inevitable feat of crushing all of us. It just keeps coming. Can There's I, no stopping it. I got an idea. What if yes. we take it to the boiler room? Oh, does the boiler room still exist? Boiler room hasn't been smushed yet. 
You don't even need to take it to the boiler room. Remember the boiler said he would just help you out if you asked him to? Besides, the foot's not really... <gasps> you can't really leave the foot anywhere at this point. It's just getting bigger and bigger and crushing more. The foot yeah, like is this point, everywhere. It's, like, it's bigger than... It's enormous, right? Yeah, it's it's massive. It's Massive. It's, it's the size of a house at this point, yeah. yeah. Did the did the boiler have a name? Boiler room. I don't think anybody ever Comrade. I think it was Comrade. Red? Comrade. Comrade <laughs> works. <laughs> yeah. oh, Let's go down there now. Red. Let's go down there now. Let's go. Gobby burn. Let's run. Yeah. You're running to the boiler room? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You you like, uh, you head can to the- we like shout for him as we're going, like to try yes. to get his attention? Comrade! Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he can uh, hear through all the ducks or whatever. You're, are, yes. you, are you just shouting for the boiler room? We should sing together in unison as one. Yes. Okay. You, I think you. you I think you should. Us. You lead us, Jimmy. All right. Boiler room. Boiler room. We need you. Boiler room. Boiler room. <laughs> You were there when I needed you. <laughs> Boiler room. <laughs> Boiler room. <laughs> the sound of steam. <laughs> and clanging pipes. Clang, 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 clang. And a voice comes, seems to come from all of everywhere and nowhere. Yes, little comrades. You have called yes. upon the Boiler room. You are very thong. Your song of the people stirred such joy in my heart. It makes me want to crush the boot of the proletariat. No, the yes! bourgeoisie. <laughs> I'm the proletariat. <laughs> it's like you said, the foot of the oppressor. A foot. Yes. That is a big foot. We... Quick, children, get behind the boiler room. Okay, so uh, we do have to run okay. to the boiler room then. You, you've been running to the boiler room all this time. Okay. Yeah, I'll get behind the boiler. Yes, me too. Yes, me too. As you get past the boiler room, there's an explosion from inside. And the metal door flies off the off of the hinges. And a burst of flame shoots out. And then dozens and dozens and dozens of the boiler's pipes come shooting out of the room. Like Woo! Get it! Get it! And they wrap around the, the toes of the foot. And they all start spraying scalding hot water. And there's the smell of of lavender. No. And all of the gunk that was on the toes and the feet, the toes and the feet and the toes and the feet is washed clean by the steam bath from the boiler's pipes. And then the boiler pipes start grabbing carpets and tapestries off of the wall. And they're like scrubbing at the heels of the foot like the like they're and you can see just patches of undead evil skin coming off as they exfoliate stubby wubby and then there's a there's a pampering there there's a squeezing and and uh as the and the the massaging all the toes. <laughs> yes yes of the boiler's pipes and you hear a loud voice from from miles 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 up 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 Booming over everything says, Oh, that feels nice. I haven't had a good penny in eons. And sure enough, well, the boiler can't really paint toenails because he doesn't have toenails because it's just feet and toes and feet and toes and feet and toes. But Stubby Wubby's foot starts to get smaller and smaller and recede. And the toes, feet curl back into the toes, curl back into the feet, curl back (gasps) into the toes, curl back into the feet. (gasps) It's working. It's beautiful. (laughs) And the foot glows. The skin looks fresh and clean. The corns have been treated. There's little bandages, the circle bandages that you put on warts, you know, just to kind of protect them. Adhesive strips. Mm Mm-hmm, little adhesive strips. There's band-aids on the blisters. And as the foot shrinks down from the depths of who knows where, two sensible, comfortable nurse's shoes are just laid there by the boiler room. And the giant foot slips its foot into one of them and says, Oh, that's that's much nicer than those hiking boots. I think, I think I'm just going to put my feet up for a couple thousand years. And the foot disappears, and the shoes go with it. And the boiler sends out one last burst of steam. And you can feel everything go quiet. And there's one last whisper. Remember, the boiler comrades... 
Remember the power of the people. Okay. I will. We're safe. <laughs> Never forget you, Boiler. Then there's a cheer that rises up from everyone. They witnessed you save the school and then destroy the school and then save the school again! Woo! Yeah! And the headmaster comes up and he's got a little crappy trophy. It's about six inches big. And it says, hey, uh, you, uh, you, oh, blah, kids, you won the creep catalog, I guess. Uh, congrats. And he hands it to you and sharpied on a piece of tape that's been stuck to the side of it. Arkle, Leonard, Nighty Knight, and Jay. And for a good ten minutes or so, everyone thinks you guys are okay. The end. Still recording. How's the ending coming? Uh, it's not. We've got some sound bites here and there, snippets of us yelling, but nothing concrete. Nothing that couldn't be done on a soundboard. No magic boot, no magic book. Even the ectoplasm turns out to be mostly gravy and cocktail weenie bits. Ugh. No solid proof, though. How do I end the podcast when it's like nothing ever happened? But it did happen, Charles. We did it. We touched something untouchable, walked beyond any boundaries we've ever imagined. And we have the audio. People will hear about St Gorgoths, about the chocolate boot and the boiler room and the little girl all in purple, and even if they don't believe it, they'll, they'll want it to be true. We all want our stories to be true, and that's what makes them real. You're right. There are some quite good bits. I think I can get us at least in the top 50 new shows of the week with this. And who knows, maybe we do a season two, get a few more patrons, buy a stupid camera that works in the dark. Another season? Hmm. I have heard stories about a magical orphanage that travels through space and time. Of course, it only exists. Beyond the Shadows. Thanks for listening to another episode of Even Footing Games Presents. You can find us at Even Footing Games on Instagram and TikTok, and Even Footing G on Twitter. Starring Ashley Arbizer as Nighty Night the Moth Girl, Jason Cassidy as The Sitter, Steve Easton as Leonard the Frogman, Carrie Hunter as Jay the Thunderhawk, Jimmy St. James as Harkle the Snallygaster, Hannah Davies as Helena Skyfall Ravenbush, and Chaz Swan as Charles Benning for the third. If you want to play your own game of babies and broadswords, you can find the book with all the rules and Crawl of Cthulhu on Amazon and Drive Through RPG, or from your local bookseller. A huge thank you to all of our patrons: Rick, Tommy, Alex, Gina, Marilise, Robin, Jim, Debbie, Kathy, and Ryan. Each one of them is exceedingly talented and attractive. <laughs>